Hello, Earthlings. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how to drop down from the nonstop monkey mind into the grounded presence and harmony of the physical body. I'm going to guide you through a simple step-by-step -step process for moving into a more centered, productive way of being by slowing down the racing thoughts and tuning in to the sensations and intuitive wisdom of the body by using ritual sound, breathing patterns, and stillness. I personally suck at getting myself to sit in meditation, even though I know it's extremely beneficial for me. So I have created this alternative way for those of you who, like me, are resistant to the idea or practice of meditation. This will be the introduction to my personal method for what I call how to loose your mind. And what I mean by this is how to loosen up the incessant overthinking most of us are practicing on a daily, sometimes even on a moment to moment basis, and instead begin to rewire that mind centric default mode to a heart centric default mode. Now I, along with virtually all of the enlightened masters of the past and present have found that the only true freedom, bliss, perfection, and peace we get to experience while in these human vessels is when we move our focus from the linear mind that's always sourcing from the past or the future and we bring ourselves back to the present moment right here and now. This is where the human being happens. The beingness, the actions, the moments that make our life meaningful, they happen right here in the present moment, in the body grounded here on the physical plane. So right about now, you may be itching to get to this instructions on how to actually practice this type of radical presence, and you're free to skip ahead to the next video in the series where I will demonstrate that. However, in order for you to get the most out of this grounding ritual, you're gonna need to have some clarity around these concepts. You wanna want these concepts defined in your mind so that you can feel the certainty needed for moving into this practice with a sense of alignment and focus. So let's start with alignment. This concept is about feeling in a line. In other words, in right order with the parts of yourself that allow you to feel resonant, harmonious, balanced, and safe. And when we're aligned, we feel certainty. We actually feel and experience being certain in the body. This is a big deal because feeling certainty is how we create our personal truth, our unique philosophy as individuals. So as I'm discussing this, I'd invite you to notice what certainty feels like in your body when you consider that word. The feeling of certainty is often described as solid, whole, safe, <laughs> like we can relax and expand and open when we're in the presence of our own certainty. So I wonder if you can sense that now. When we're in alignment with something, we feel that expansive, loving, inclusive sense that only comes with what's true. The important thing to note here is that we must physically sense our truth. It's not the mind alone that decides on something being true for us. It's deeper than that. It's when we feel the truth in our experiential body, our living human vessel, that we can own that certainty, that confidence that comes with knowing something is true for you. Why is this important? It's because this unique philosophy, this personal truth, this certainty and confidence about what's true and real in our world is where our genius lives. And if any of our lives have any purpose at all, it is to access and share our unique genius with the world. So now perhaps you're starting to feel into how important it is to loose our minds so that we can feel the intuitive wisdom of our body and get in touch with this inner genius and bring it to the surface. Okay, so what is the mind and why does it take loosening our minds in order to access this inner genius. The mind is the totality of conscious and unconscious mental processes and activities. It's a gorgeous part of us that makes images from our domestications and <laughs> memories of past experiences, and it projects them onto our future potential. With this, it weaves an elaborate and quite believable story of who we are. We call this story the ego. 
The ego story is the closest thing to truth and certainty our conscious mind can conjure up in an attempt to give us an option for how we can enact our free will while in our human vessel. Our mind does all of this because it's deeply in love with us and it wants nothing more than to support our ability to survive and experience the full spectrum of human possibilities. The issue is that when we believe the ego story, this finite option, and we identify as it, we forget to call upon our other parts, most specifically the intuitive clarity of our physical body that has direct access to the ocean of wisdom within our unconscious, including our genius. When we only look to the ego for how to experience our lives, We're asking a minuscule, finite perspective to guide us through a universe of infinite possibilities. And this creates a major FOMO from the other parts of our beingness. And thus we experience the pain of life not feeling authentic or purposeful. We need all of our parts on board giving them each a say so that we can navigate our lives to the hilt. Getting into communion with our minds and bodies gives us access to the endless divine creator. Yes, this is how we commune with God. Now I know this may seem foreign as a concept or even scary to believe you have direct access to that type of immense power within you. But as you practice with it, you will shift from fear to revelation. Now to be clear, what I mean when I say the word God, I don't mean it as any one idea that some of the world's most prominent religions have put forth. Although if you already have a belief in an external God, you can most certainly picture that God as what or who you're communing with when you practice loosening your mind. But in an attempt to put words to describing the indescribable God from my lens, I think it's more closely experienced as a feeling. So when I say these words, see if you can sense the feeling that comes when you are embodying and experiencing them. God is alignment, reverence, expansion, bliss, truth, certainty, safety, radical acceptance, all possibilities, abundance, love. Again, if you need to put a name and a face to your God, please do. I like that way too. So with or without a face, let's see if we can experience the divine as an infinitely powerful collective unconscious an energy source like the sun that radiates all the light and nourishment we could ever need in an unconditional, uncompromising way that we can be certain about whenever we turn toward it. It holds any answers our ego can't reach. It houses the infinite creativity of the universe and it holds the door open for us to be with it any moment we choose to. And in knowing that it takes both our mind and body working together, we can allow these parts of us to graciously make room for one another, become more balanced through this and thereby access God. So let's take a breath here and just notice what's going on inside of us, even in this moment as we're we're learning about how to be with God. And especially because this may be new and therefore unnerving information, we may have that ego voice coming online with skepticism, impatience, and fear, wanting to just go about our safe enough little lives in the way we know how and not wanting to implement any of this newness, not wanting to stir up any of this expansion. This is a great time to give the ego its rightful acronym, E-G-O, edging God out. Again, it's not that the ego is an enemy. It's most certainly not an enemy. Rather, if we overly identify with it, we forget to include the body wisdom that allows us to access God. The body wisdom I'm speaking of is also often referred to as the intuition of the heart. This is what's meant when we speak about being guided by the heart or following our heart or listening to our heart. We're talking about listening to the honest information our body gives us when we become still enough to hear it. This is also what I mean when I speak about moving from a mind-centric to a heart-centric way of living. We're moving from the roaring future projections and fast-paced options of our mind that are being offered on a consistent basis to the more subtle, quieter whisper of the human body, which is only discernible when we bring ourselves into the present moment here now where the body exists. From this grounded, present, heart-centered place, we access the divine and 
realize our true selves as the divine. So as we move into this practice, let's try to notice the parts of us that call us to go on a heroic journey to transform who we are or who we believe we are, the small ego finite option into it, the more expansive godlike genius. This is going to be the most important thing we do with our lives. And I am honored to be a part of your journey and to remind you that you already are all of it. I will see you in the next video where we'll attune to the body, where reality can be sensed and where we can begin feeling into how we want to shift it.